Alright, hello again, and welcome to part two of this tutorial series. Uh, part one, which you should have already watched, covers the basics of the SOLIDWORKS user interface. Uh, part two is going to cover basic sketching and extruded parts. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new part. And I'm going to make sure the units of this new part are set in millimeters, grams, seconds in the bottom right, which should be the default. Uh, now, when you go to create geometry in a new part, you start from two dimensions and then move into three, typically, in SOLIDWORKS. So, two-dimensional tools are kept mostly in the sketch toolbar here, and three-dimensional tools are kept mostly in features. Uh, this tutorial is going to concentrate on the extruded type three-dimensional features, which means taking a 2D profile and pushing it. SOLIDWORKS even gives a convenient little animation there pushing it into three dimensions, like so. So to start with an empty part here, you can either go to the sketch toolbar and create a sketch, at which point SOLIDWORKS will prompt you to select one of the three default planes to position your sketch on, or you can go to the features toolbar and click right on extruded boss base. SOLIDWORKS then will allow you to either select an existing sketch or create a new one by selecting a plane or a face. So I'm going to select arbitrarily the top plane to position my sketch on. Uh, now, once you get into the sketch tool, you have a series of basic tools you can use to make shapes. Uh, I'll go over those in a minute. First, I'm just going to demonstrate the basic flow here. So I might create a circle. I might take the circle and give it a constrained diameter, 120 millimeters. And then now if I'm done with this, that's all I need, then I can go in the top right here and click the exit button in blue. And what that'll do is it'll drop me right back to the extrude tool because I started by selecting the extrude tool, at which point I can enter a height for the extrusion, say 25 millimeters. And if I hit OK here, it will create that solid. Uh, one thing I really want to focus on here, because I've seen a lot of people starting with SOLIDWORKS make this mistake. Uh, say I find here, oh no, I, I'm missing something. I wanted to put something else in that sketch. This isn't the, mo the, the model I want. I can hit the X button to cancel. But what happens when you cancel is it puts you back in the sketch. It doesn't drop you back to the base SOLIDWORKS user interface. It puts you back in the sketch. So make your changes right there. So say I, uh, I didn't mean for it to be a full circle. I meant for it to be something like a three quarter circle. So I can do that and I can trim. But now, once you've modified your sketch, since you hit cancel on the extrude the first time, when you exit, it is not going to prompt you to extrude again. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to select the extrude tool again and then select your sketch. Then it'll bring you back to this. I can say 20 millimeters. And there we go. You can also go back here and say, oh no, I made a mistake in the depth. You can right click the extrude and hit edit feature. And that'll allow you to change all the parameters of the extrude. Or if you messed up the sketch, you can expand the extrude with the little arrow beside it right click the sketch and hit edit sketch and then that will allow you to make changes to the sketch itself. Now I'm just going to select that extrude and delete it by hitting the delete key and get rid of the sketch underneath it too. Uh, kind of go back to base so I can explain some of those sketch tools I was talking about before. So I'm going to go extrude, I'm going to select my plane and it's going to create a sketch for me. So the most basic sketch tool is the line, right? I can select that and I can draw some lines. Uh, more or less self-explanatory in that case. Uh, when you see a little arrow beside a tool, that means there's different types underneath it. So there's a line, uh, there's a center line, which is a construction line. So when you create a center line, uh, it'll not affect the geometry. So you can see I can make a bunch of center lines like that. And then I can create a profile like that. 
and you'll see that the profile is highlighted in gray as something that would be extruded, but the center lines are completely ignored. They're construction lines. So when you create a set these center lines, they have no effect. You can turn any line in the drawing into a center line too by selecting it and on the left checking the option for construction. Get rid of all this geometry. And then there's also the midpoint line. So if I select a midpoint line, it'll allow me to draw a line by selecting the center first and then one of the outer points rather than selecting the start and end as with the conventional line tool. Uh, for a circle, it's very similar. You have your conventional circle where you select the midpoint and then a point on the perimeter. And then you have your perimeter circle where you select three points around the perimeter and it draws a circle that goes through those three points. Uh, splines you can use to create more complex geometry, but when you're beginning with SOLIDWORKS, you can safely ignore those. No need to worry about them. Uh, the rectangle by default is the corner rectangle where you select opposite corners like that. Uh, very useful is also the centered rectangle. If you want to create a rectangular or a square part that's centered around the origin, uh, this will allow you to select the middle of the rectangle first and then one of the outer corners, and it'll automatically create a rectangle that has these uh, kind of bisecting center lines that allow it to be centered around the origin. The tangent arc can also be a useful tool in some cases. So say I have a few lines here. Uh, a tangent arc will allow me, if I select it, to click the first line and then draw an arc that will always be tangent to that line. So you see, no matter where I move the endpoint of this arc, it's tangent to the first line I clicked. Uh, there's also the center point arc, which will allow me to select the midpoint first and then the outer edge of the arc, but you see it's not tangent now to that line. And there's the three point arc, which is very similar to the three point circle, uh, except it only creates a partial circle rather than a full one. The ellipse is rather similar to the arc, except it's elliptical, obviously. Uh, the text tool can be very, very useful, especially when you're 3D printing. It allows you to uh, more or less create arbitrary text that'll just be printed straight into your 3D print. Uh, the slot tool is useful in general. Uh, it allows you, instead of having to draw two arcs and then draw a slot between them, it allows you to just draw a slot by selecting the center points of the ends of the slot and then the diameter of the slot. Uh, there are variations on the slot tool that I won't be uh, that I won't bother going through here. You should explore the variations on all these tools yourself to make sure you really grasp how they work. But you can also create uh, kind of arced slots. And then uh, the last one, a polygon tool, is very useful when you're trying to CAD fasteners. Uh, you can create a kind of regular polygon of any arbitrary number of sides. So I can make this a 10-sided polygon or a 5-sided polygon. And it's kind of its own polygon object. Delete all that. And then finally there is the fillet tool, which allows me to select it, select a radius here under parameters, and I can fill at the edge of any two lines. So you see it replaces them with an arc. And underneath it, there's also a chamfer, which has a similar effect, except it's a sharp cut instead of a radius cut. And the last one here is a point. Uh, points are just for constraining things to, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, these points, they're just for construction. They will not affect the geometry of your part. I'm going to select all that and delete it. So kind of the crux of sketches, the most important part is constraints. So if I draw a bunch of arbitrary lines here, let's make them 
pretty messed up. There we go. So you see how this one is black, because when I was drawing it, I held it vertical and SolidWorks automatically dropped a vertical constraint on it. That means that this is not going to move side to side. Uh, the endpoint, though, is blue, which indicates that it is movable. So anything in a sketch blue is unconstrained, and anything black is constrained. You can see in the bottom right here, it says, besides editing sketch 2, it says underdefined. Uh, when you do your sketches. Once you're done with a sketch, you want it to be fully defined. You shouldn't extrude underdefined sketches because it means they can change, they're not fully constrained, and a sketch being able to change is a bit of a recipe for disaster uh, in terms of your part changing on you and you not knowing why at a later date. So here, I'm going to start constraining this. So I'm going to take this top line, I'm going to select it, and when you select a line, there is a list of constraints on the side that become available that you can add to that line. I'm going to make it horizontal. I'm going to select this line, and I'm going to make it vertical. I'm going to select this line, and I could make it horizontal. Instead, I'm going to kind of mix things up. I'm going to select both lines. I'm going to make them perpendicular. So when you select both lines, you'll notice you get a different set of constraints. You have horizontal, vertical, but you also have collinear, which means they're along, both segments are along the same line. Uh, perpendicular, parallel, you know, self-explanatory, and equal, which makes them an equal length. So I'm going to select this guy, I'm going to make it vertical, and I'm going to select this guy, and I'm going to make it horizontal. So uh, these are now more constrained, but as you can see, none of them have turned black, and I'm still able to arbitrarily move them around. So to fix that, we're going to have to add some dimensions to these. So uh, for instance, I can make these two equal just as an extra constraint. And then I take a dimension and I apply it to this one. And uh, let's make that, let's say, 20 millimeters. And zoom to fit. There we go. So you can see making that 20 millimeters has made these lines and their endpoints completely constrained because they're equal to each other and that horizontal one is 20 millimeters long. And it's made these lines constrained, but their endpoints are still not fully defined. So you can see that endpoint is blue. I can still drag it around, but not side to side. Uh, let's say let's make these two equal two for a bit of an uncreative shape, but oh well. And now you can see that that point can only move along the diagonal because of the way I've constrained everything else. These two lines also have to be equal. Uh, so this is really the part in SOLIDWORKS that requires a good grasp of 2D geometry so you can know how everything's going to work out. I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it 50 millimeters tall. And there we go. So that's kind of a basic sketch. As you can see, it's all black. It says fully defined. If I back out of this now and extrude it, it'll make a nice solid that will not change unless I change one of these dimensions or the constraints. All right, so let's make this shape a little more complicated. So I'm going to select a center point arc here. I'm going to position the center of the arc there. And I'm going to put the arc contacting both these lines at each end. And I'm also going to constrain the radius of the arc to be, let's say, 15 millimeters. Now, I have slightly strange geometry here because I have lines going through the center of the part. So as you can see, SOLIDWORKS is automatically going to detect a profile to extrude, and it's detecting this kind of L shape. I can solve that by using the Trim Entities tool. So I have it set to Power Trim here, and what Power Trim means is I can click, and I can drag it, and you see it's drawing kind of a gray line, through the parts of the lines I want to remove, to trim off. There we go. As you can see, the issue with trimming is it tends to break some constraints. So once you trim, chances are you're going to have to fix the constraints. So select those two points, horizontal, and then make that point vertical to the origin. And then it's also gotten rid of the equal constraint on those lines because I modified the lines. So I select those both and click equal again. And now we're back to fully constrained. And as you can see, SOLIDWORKS selects this profile.
And now let's make use of the sketch fillet tool, just as an example. So I'm going to select two edges there. Uh, SolidWorks warns that having uh, equal or equidistant relationships on the lines that you're filleting might cause problems. So you can hit yes and check and here. As you can see, it hasn't deleted the relation, but what it has done is it's kept it on this line, which is now shorter due to the fillet. So that's undesirable. Uh, in a lot of cases, that happens with sketches. When you use the fillet tool in the sketch, it's undesirable. I'm going to show you in a minute how to avoid that. So let's take our geometry here, back out, and extrude it. And now, instead of using the fillet in the sketch, I can use a fillet in the features toolbar and just fillet the resulting three-dimensional geometry. Let's make it a millimeter. And now this doesn't affect my sketch and all its constraints and make my life more complicated because of that. So yeah, that's just a video to show kind of the basics of extruding. Um, I threw the fillet in there because it's important to know when you're making sketches that you can do that kind of um, finishing effect afterwards in three dimensions and avoid ruining your sketch. It's my preference to always do those in 3D personally. Some people do think differently though. Uh, next time I'll cover more complicated parts of SolidWorks. So I can cover uh, revolves and then cuts in subsequent videos. I hope this was helpful. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.